What's up everyone? I thought I would give you a quick tour of my home network and show you a few of the items I use to keep it on a budget. So I'm making this video for two reasons. One, there were very few videos and reviews of the equipment I wanted to use, so I'll get to do that. Two, I just wanted to share what I did to get a nice wired network in my home without spending too much money. It's rack mounted in my closet and looks pretty official. I had some goals for this project. Number one, I wanted it to look official and look nice and pass the wipe test. Part of looking official was to have it be rack mounted in my office closet. I wanted it set up to allow for easy expansion in the future. Uh, one gigabit per second speed uh, to move data quickly. At least a 24 port switch so there would be room for said expansion. It was going to be in my office closet so I wanted it to be quiet or even silent if I could and I for sure wanted a patch panel so I could easily add ports and reconfigure the network down the road. So the equipment I chose was the Navpoint 6U 19 inch wall mount rack a Navpoint 24 port patch panel. The switch I use is the TP-Link TLSG 1024 24 port 1 gigabit rack mountable switch and a bunch of other things that I would need. So this is a Navpoint 6U 19 inch wall mount rack I ordered from Newegg, just $39. It came in that simple box, no fancy packaging. There's no access from the sides, nor are there any places to manage cables, but only minor problems. There's a decent amount of space for the equipment, uh, but it's not too large. It does have a 12 inch depth, which should allow enough space for most any typical rack mounted equipment. And this is a switch I chose. It was only $70 on Newegg. It will support one gigabit per second speed and is rack mountable or comes with felt stickers that will let you put it on desk if you choose. It has 24 ports there you can see. Uh, and link lights to let you know uh, or see the network activity. The model number there you can see is the TLSG1024 uh, port switch. Here I'm screwing in the brackets to mount it to the rack later. And this is the closet and location where I wanted to mount everything. This is the current setup, which just isn't nerdy enough for me, so I'm going to mount the rack right here. I'm installing the patch panel. The rack does have a hinge that will swing out to make it easier to punch down your cables on the back of the patch panel. But I didn't find it to be very useful because if you had anything else mounted to the rack, you would have to remove it all before the patch panel would swing freely again on the rack. And with the patch panel just hanging there, you didn't get much support to push hard when punching down. Installing the switch, which uh, installed fairly easily, the rack only came with just a few screws, the black ones, which was a bummer, but I found some more, the silver ones. And after contacting Navpoint, they said, sent me a bunch of them, which was pretty cool. The rack mounted power strip I already had, so I didn't include that in the cost of this network build. I kind of had to loosen and adjust some of the other equipment, as you can see here, to get it all to line up with the screw holes, but I eventually got it. Here's the setup, nearly done, but I still needed to route a few cables a little differently and to tidy up those power cables underneath. I was filling in the section of wall here in our home, which would be right behind our entertainment center. I thought I would run some cables here for the DVR, the Xboxes. I kind of have everything staged for now. You can see here I've set, the, set up the power. I ran the network cables through the crawl space. I also had one network cable up here, as you can see as we go up for the TV. I tried to make everything all nice and neat uh, to make it easier to run extra cable in the future. You can even see that thin light teal pull cable to allow me to easily pull other cable through the wall for the TV down the road, which should be nice. These here are the eight network cables for this wall hanging out the other side, waiting to be terminated. 
I wanted plenty of ports, and as you never know what will be needed, uh, what will need a network connection at my entertainment center. And up higher, here we are, is the single Ethernet cable power and cable pass through for the TV. I have this on the wall where the TV will hide it all once mounted, and the network cable is just chilling out, waiting to be terminated. In the closet in the office, uh, any cable I ran, the other end will come through this cable pass-through plate, which only cost me $5.50 from Newegg, and will eventually get terminated at the patch panel. This plate plays a vital role in making this setup look neat. In cable management, for networking, neatness is everything, and all said and done, I'm very pleased with how it looks and, and how it turned out. Next the patch panel. A must-have for any serious network. This one only cost me $25 and seems to be very nice. I haven't had any issues with it. If you do get this patch panel, you will have to be aware of the weird pattern they want you to use to punch down the cables. Most cables get punched down in a straight row, but this one they were stacked. Blue and green on the top, and brown and orange on the bottom as you can see from the picture there on the back. Uh, you'll get to see here in just a bit how I did it. Pick a standard A or B and stick with it however B is the one that's most commonly used. Once I figured out how they wanted it, punched down, it wasn't really too hard to do. There's a little hook where you can run some zip ties here you can see to relieve the stress on your cables, which I would recommend for sure. The punch down tool I'm using only costs $14, you'll see it here in a second. So you, you'll see me, here it is. Uh, you strip the cables, unwind the, the pairs, place them where they need to go and punch them down, not too hard. At that point you're just kind of rinse and repeat. Once I got the hang of it, it, it went fairly quickly, and here I am punching them down. The more I did this, the faster I got. All said and done, this setup cost me just a little under $200, and I was able to hit all my goals, and it looks pretty nice. So it, it turned out looking pretty good. Still, this is a little bit of an older picture. I had to uh, still have a couple cables to do, and I have a picture at the very end of what it looks like done. So I got a few of the sticky hooks from the store and stuck them on the back. It helps with cable management. They work great and everything tucks up behind. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Look for the full review of the switch and perhaps the rack if there's enough interest. Here's the finished product. Thanks for watching.